This is a video about how to import capital gain data in Genius. I have opened Genius and Income Tax Portal for this specific client over here. Now over here, I'm showing it for a return which has already been submitted. So it will show me, do you still want to make changes? This will not come in yours. Now simply open capital gain and over here you will see securities, long term and short term. Now records over here have already been entered. So these are showing, but it won't show in yours. Now there are two buttons over here, import and export. In order to import, you need to first export a file in which you will actually add the data. So here I'll click the export button, uh, save it wherever you like, wherever you can find it later on. I'll put it in the client's exact folder over here. Over here, I'll name it import, but uh, I've already done the same file, so I'll name it import 22. You can name it anything that you like, you can find it later on. Here it will say that I have uh, exported 109 records, but it will come as zero in yours because you wouldn't have exported any records, all right? Now you simply have to go and find that file which you have exported right now. And this is the file, import 22. Here you can see that uh, the already entered data is showing. This will not show in yours. It will be completely blank. And on the top side, you can see all these uh, boxes. This is all the data that has already been filled. This, these uh, name, currency and everything. Also one more thing, it will show much less boxes in the start, but uh, once you scroll towards the right, it will show you all the others. Then I'll go to the income tax portal and download the AIS statement because there will be a few types of records that you can find this data from one is from your broker and you know the other is from this ai statement it's not always completely correct but this is a good way to find it out if your client is not providing you data over here in the end you will find out purchases but you have to find out sales in order to calculate capital gain here there are a few records for this sale of securities and units of mutual funds you can see sale of securities of units of mutual fund all of them are not same, but they are slightly different. Where you can find out all these records. Now you have to simply download the CSV file. CSV is a basic Excel file, but it's on a different format. But it'll open up in Excel. Just give it a second. Here you go. You can see all different types of information now presented to you in an Excel format. You can find such, something like this of a file from your broker as well from your client's broker. It will also showcase date of purchase, which is not over here in this. You can see date of sale and date of transfer. I mean, it's the same thing. And then the securities name, securities code, class, what kind of market they are in, in listed market, or if it's a non-listed share, it's short term or long term. It'll show you different things. These are the details that you will have to fill inside. Now I'll go to the last line, which is free. You can uh, start in the first line. So first thing it will ask you if it is an listed share or an unlisted share. So most of my shares are listed and also if it comes on AIS, most likely it's listed. If it doesn't stay, you can, if it doesn't say, you can put listed over here, see, listed equity shares. Go towards the left if you find other things, see it says listed e equity shares. Now for this purpose, I'm just putting in equity shares for mutual funds. It They are equity shares for mutual funds, but you can find your shares can be different. There are a few columns which showcase uh, which class of security is this. So was there, you can see that security class is liquidity and listed equity shares. Now this is a short term or a long term. You can find out if it's asking for data. If you put it over here, there's a little bit of difference to it. Over there, you can see that on the top, it will show you long term with a hyphen in the middle. And over here, we can see that the data we have entered does not have long term with an hyphen in the middle and similarly short term with an hyphen in the middle. It wants exactly the same type of data that it requires. So you cannot put uh, without an hyphen. So you will have to put an hyphen in the middle of them. Now you'll think that how will I put an hyphen in the middle of all of them? But there's a simple trick to this. I'll tell you. I use a simple if loop. Uh, you cannot put the if loop over here in this column because uh, it will only accept certain type of data. I'll tell you how it's done. See, I have um, made this mistake on purpose. Over here, I'm putting the if loop as this square 
does it have short term or long term so in computers to clarify if it's a character you will have to put inverted commas on left and right of the characters so over here i have say, uh, stated that exactly if you see short term in inverted commas without an hyphen convert it to short term with an hyphen or if it's not short term then it's probably long term that's why convert it into a long term this is a, how an if loop works i'll put it in the description the exact uh, form that i wrote over here now see it's giving me this error that you cannot put uh, uh, this if loop in this column because this column can only accept long term or short term nothing else so over here then i'll go to the next sheet i'll show you on the next side over here see i'm transferring it to text i was trying other things as well that why is it not working at the time but then i realized that the square won't take it so then then i go over here now you have to put equals to then you have to put if then you have to open a bracket then you have to select the square in which you want to test whatever is there or not then equals to that if this square has short term with a space in middle and whatever the text uh, is given by your client you know it would i am um, either say short term or it would say st or something else like that and then the first comma after that it says that if the condition is true then what should i print and if the condition is false then what should i print the second comma denotes what should i print if the con condition is false so i have put long term in the condition is false so then i'll just copy this and pull this down also my filler box is not working on this computer you can activate it in yours I'll paste it over here, so it'll give me short term and long term with an hyphen in the middle. See, everywhere. Now I have to copy this and do not paste it just normally. You have to paste it as values. I'll show you the mistake that I have done as well. You have to go a little bit up. There is a lot of data. Here you go. When you'll paste it, it'll put as this is long term. So this is not gonna work. So you have to right click it and then you have to paste as values, right? the one little sign which says uh, paste one two three over here see you just paste the values and that will show you the exact data short term short term right you can check it if there is any error then your loop might be incorrect then you can delete all the data on the right side you don't need it now it's asking the name of the company the company shares which you have sold so there's the security name this is the actual thing don't get confused by names it might be stated differently in some places now just simply copy and paste it if the isin code over there is there in it there's no problem now you require the sales consideration which is the value of sale basically just copy this simply and then you put it in the sales amount now it is asking whether it, okay yeah now it's asking whether shares of a company other than quoted shares so most of my shares are quoted i mean all of the shares are quoted so i'll put no over here unquoted shares you can find out on the internet what's unquoted shares simple thing but most of the shares uh, your clients will be dealing in are quoted shares just copy and paste no and then it's asking for fair market value of unquoted shares now my shares are quoted that's why i have put no in the first block and that's why i won't put any value in the second block fair value it won't give me any error because uh, i have already put no over here all right fair market value i don't have to put okay next thing it'll ask me is date of sale now be very careful in putting these date of sale this is the most complex part of the equation over here you can find out the date of sale and or transfer it might be stated as transfer or as sale they were both of them are the same thing you don't have to copy it in the fair market value one you have to copy it in the date of sale one now think about it uh, the format has to be exactly correct so it's over here stated ddmm -Y, 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 y format so this is not a ddmm -Y, -Y, y format so press control plus one or go over here into the more numbers tab and over here you can see and change the format type of this selected share selected blocks over here go to this date and then in this date you can go to the third one 
for me this is the third one because they are they are dd and then there is a knife in the middle and mm then knife and then four years okay right a yyyy format so this will come in ddmm by format please check if your date has changed because sometimes the value in the date would change because the value is not stated as a date in the first csv file so be correct uh, see a few of these transaction right now this is purchase cost which is cost of acquisition stated over here now so you can see that names are differently given but most of them you can understand fair market value on jan 31st 2018 now i do not have this because uh, the csv file on ais does not state this but if your client has given you this information then you have to enter it over here or if you have it you know the broker would provide this information most likely a any broker site or any broker application from which you will generate this excel file will have it now date of purchase also the ais portal does not give you the date of purchase but these brokers will give you this date of purchase you simply have to copy it like date of sale or other the uh, components uh, you just simply have to copy it from excel and then you have to paste it and you have to specifically change the format of date like you did for the date of sale so over here because i don't have it so i'll forge a date for 1st of april 2021 and then i'll copy it for all of them you can uh, put it over here whatever you like if you don't have the date of purchase because if it's short term it doesn't really matter but if it's long term it would matter but even in case of shares the indexation value would not work over here i'm making a intentional mistake and i'm changing the month format into as just a normal four so that later on this uh, 111 line would give me an error so triple one would later on give us an error to showcase you that how the errors work now where transfer expenses are i have put zero if there are any transfer expenses and it's stated you can give it stt paid is always a yes because uh, on listed transaction you will have to pay stt and in bonds and debentures other than capital index i do not need to put this because uh, these kind of securities are not this amount received under section 94 is also not applicable to me but then this isin code is applicable this is the isin code which is stated in these uh, ais forms you can see on the f2 tab over here in the first one you can see that this isin code is given away now you will be thinking like how will i get this isin code out of all of these and put it in but there is a simple trick to this as well now put it in on a different sheet so that you don't mess it up go to the data tab in excel and over here go to this text to column on the right side over here you will find text to columns in this text to columns this is a delimiter option which we are going to try to export this out into another different block you can find out that there is a bracket which starts this isin code everywhere so from this bracket we will cut it out all right you can copy this bracket or where if your broker file has something else which derives um, this isin code or consists uh, starts from this isin code then over here you go to this delimit tab delimited then you will select a delimited do not select fixed width because it will give you a problem later on fixed width only works with fixed lines now go to the other tab and then you can put this um, bracket over here and then you go next and then you go finish after this just simple thing once you do this the isin code will come to the right side if you do not understand this watch the video again or go out on the internet and find the video for delimit how to delimit with and the way you can see that there is another bracket at the end i can also delimit that also out so that it's easier later on i can also use other scripts like uh, from right or from left which are other tabs and other formulas in excel which i can use but i'll just simply use this one delimit next and go to the others and then you can put the right uh, thing that you want to cut it out from and i'll cut it out see it should come in the c tab but it didn't this time it's uh, basically deleting those things now you will just have to take all of this and just paste it over here in the isin code this isin code basically denotes which kind of security it is and uh, the government will know whenever you will upload it it's uh, basically a specific code for every kind of security every security has a different code and you can check it out that you have pasted the right security for each one now near number of shares or securities of unit basically number of units that you have sold or purchased uh, in this case it's only sold now where you you can see i have uh, stated over here some places it can be zero but it's actually not zero it's some units you have to come over here and you can see that there is the quantity given you just copy the quantity and paste it over here it can be in decimals as well you can see it can be in 0.20 decimals 
now sales price per unit this per unit thing is different and sales consideration is different it's basically multiplying the quantity into sales price per unit now fair value market value per share per unit this is actually given in the data sometimes the fair market value uh you is actually given you can copy this and paste it over here it's on a different date however i have still copied it because it states that as on 31st january 2018 but this is not on 31st january 2018 still i have put it in now this is the last tab so this is 169 records total of 169 records will be imported so we'll just see if we had made any mistakes yeah complete this listed tab to all of these you can just simply use controls control arrow keys to move around quickly and you can just paste it over here all of this now all these re records are completely accurate and completely filled now this is the 169 one i'll just write down which record is having the last record and which is the error record 111 is our error record all right so we'll save this file and then close it even if you don't close it, it's not a problem uh, it will import it even if it's open now go to this import button in genius now import it over here select and browse that file this is import 22 my file so i'll open it and then i'll select over here you can select uh, that from which date should it consider uh, long term or no, short term it can uh, figure out if it's a long term sale or a short term sale if you put just the time and the date rather than putting short term or long term in the middle so it's uh, the software is really smart if you don't know it will pick it up on its own i have put that it will find it out on its own all right the data is over here now you can proceed for all entries i put you if you put no entries it would not figure out on its own now it will show you it is showing me this error on line 111 that the date format for purchase is incorrect now it can show you multiple different errors and you can com completely understand where the error lies now it will open the file for you automatically and it will line up that uh, line and in that square it will put yellow that that's there is an error so you just go and over there you can just simply correct the error and see like this you have to put a date format dd mm by by and the slashes don't matter you can put iphones and slashes as well you can see that in data purchase i put slashes rather than iphones it just has to be in the right format now it will show me that it uh, has only imported 168 records. This is because the first line is of particulars. So it will import only 168 records. Now you can put long term, short term, all different kinds of records just in one place. Okay, 168 records are now completed. It will show me data which has already been recorded but the records have increased. It will not show me the line number to show you that it has completely been a record but there has been this recording. You can find out that all of these have accurately been entered. You can check a few later on. Now this is how it's done. All right. If there is anything that you want to learn more and if you want to ask me, just put it in the comments. And if I've done any mistake in this video, you can also tell me in the comments. Also, you can save this file, but it doesn't really matter anything. Now, once you go out of the software to the main screen of the software, you can find out that it will automatically calculate your STCG and LTCG for you. Uh, where uh, you can see from the start of the video that it has increased.